show you guys some really simple ways to do uh, studio lighting, but with uh, basic items that you can find um, anywhere at home or just from the just a basic hardware store. Nothing very expensive here except for your camera. Um, so let me go into full screen. So uh, I have a few variety of light bulbs and we won't play with all of them, but they all put out a slightly different uh, tone, uh, color balance of light. And just wanting you to think about what they produce and how that kind of shows up in your camera. Um, and this can include even your smartphone, which has an LED light that's very warm. I'm sorry, very, very cool, uh, which I have used in many other demos just to show that cool tone that's thrown around, but we'll, we'll give that one a try. And then this is a clamp light, which are pretty affordable. You can find them at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, all that kind of stuff. They're usually just a few dollars uh, per, um, per clamp light, and I just buy a bunch of them. And these are, uh, I think these are at Ikea for like a couple dollars each, and they, they produce a low power, but very, very, very warm light. And then here's kind of your basic ones you can find at any store. And one thing I just want you to pay attention to is what it says right here. Soft white light, a fluorescent bulb. It may even have the temperature on it if you turn the box over right here. And as you can see, it says, uh, if you zoom in really close, yeah, 2700 K. So this is a very warm, um, light source that's coming out of it. It's, it's soft white is what they kind of advertise as a warm light. And a cool light is usually considered like natural light bulb, which I think is a little counterproductive, but the, I think they're just trying to speak to the average person and what they consider to be warm or cool light. So we'll play with a little bit of both of them. So let's get this light bulb and let's back up a bit. And I have a setup with one of my clamp lights over here with there's a soft light bulb in there. One of these is actually in here. And since I don't have a model in the studio, I'm just using my little, my test dummy. So you can see the image I'm shooting on the right and you can see the, documentar the documentary camera just set up. So you can see what I'm doing. Now I have it automatically cropping. I have a, I use bridge to run through Photoshop to batch process and crop everything um, so that we'll have a square image here. You can see that first things first, my picture in the background is not a good backdrop. So I put a white piece of foam core here and it's got some dents and dings on it, but I'm using such a shallow depth of field that it's not that noticeable, so that should work fine. And you may see the, the background creep in a little bit here and there, but that's okay. We'll think about that later when we just touch it up at the end. And so I'm just gonna just start playing with the light. Now look at what happens to the light when I move it closer, further in the front, in the back, and you'll see the light changing here. I'm increasing those shadows. As I get closer, look at the power. The light is now stronger because I'm much closer to my subject, so I can increase the power of the light bulb just by playing with distance. And then I pulled it really far away. See here, I, I came back a foot or so, and the power dropped, right? And then further, and I'm changing my angle. Now I'm kind of further in the back. I'm trying to get behind it a little bit. And then I turn the light bulb slightly away from it to lower its power. Because if it's aimed directly at your light source, it's more powerful. When it's aimed away, it's less powerful. So I'm trying to find a little happy, sweet spot. This is a, I stepped into the shot a little bit here, and I produced a shot to show you a reflector because there may be times you want to bounce light or use a reflector. So this is a reflector. This is a professional one that you can buy at a store and they're, they're kind of overpriced for what they are. All they do is they just kind of open up into this, this nice shape. It's uh, got a silver side and a white side, depending on which one you buy, or you can use a piece of foam core. Now for this demo, uh, I'm going to start with just a piece of, um, with this uh, reflector, but then I'll move on to the more affordable material, white foam core. And as you can see right here, it's nice and dark on this side. I have a harsh light here. I have no bouncing light here, and I chose to wear black. You can see I'm pointing out my black t-shirt, black hat, black pants, because I'm, I, if I wear a white shirt, then my body becomes a reflector. So I'd have a little bit of light here if I was wearing a white t-shirt or red if I was wearing a red shirt or what have you. So this is why a lot of photographers will wear uh, all black in the studio or all gray so that they're not bouncing light as they walk around. And then look at the huge difference here when I step up here. I don't even have an angle just right, and it's still producing some light. And as I get closer, it gets brighter and brighter, see, I'm kind of right out of the frame here. Here's a more affordable reflector, and this is just a scrap piece of a foam core that was used for, I think, like a science project in a high school. A friend of mine works at a high school, and they, instead of throwing all these foam core away, he gives me a bunch, and I usually hand them out, because um, they're great reflectors. So the back end is, is clear, there's nothing on it, see right there? So it's a perfect little reflector. So without the reflector, here's the, the shadowy side, with the reflector. With, without. And you can see its power is, is much less. It just depends on how much light it collects. You know, if I'm putting this in the right spot where it's collecting as much light and bouncing it back as possible. And that's how much light it produces. So I'm gonna go back to this other side right here. 
And I'm gonna turn it away. See how I turned it away and look how much, how darker it got. And I'm gonna use that piece of foam core as a reflector. So now instead of having raw, harsh, unfiltered light, which is this, hitting my subject here, see how the harsh shadows and the harsh light, I'm softening it. Now, of course, I need to change my camera metering because now I have a much lower light source. When the light is coming back here, bouncing off here and hitting my subject, I am um, very dramatically reducing the power of that light. So I, I, now I play with my settings a little bit. See, I'm not really doing anything on the left end. It's just, you don't see it, but I'm changing my settings. I'm ticking it up so it looks just right. And this is starting to look a little better. There you go. Now this is what happens. See, this is the, the appropriate settings now where I'm getting nice soft lighting. It's a little bit longer of an exposure. I turn the light back around, of course, boom, it blows out. And that's because you remember I'm playing with those settings. So just be aware of what you're doing with your camera when you're playing with your light sources. So of course I changed my settings back to the original settings so now it's appropriate again, but now I'm back to harsh shadows. So I'm gonna play with things here to try to, let's try to reduce those shadows and see what we can get here. So I pull out my, uh, you can see in my hand here, those are my light bulbs that have a, what they call a natural light. And on the side it says it's a much more cooler light bulb. Um, it's, temp it's color temperature is much higher. So when I turn that puppy on, that's over here out of frame. You can't quite see it though. I'll pull it in the frame later. You see it is dropping a little bit of light on the background and it's dropping a very, very um, cool light on the right half of his face here. Now I, I have a choice on which way I can meter on him. Uh, my, my white balance settings is set for this to be the natural white. So what you can't see on my camera is I'm gonna fluctuate through all the white balance settings. As you can see, I fluctuate to one section, one white, one white balance settings. I think it's like overcast day. But now the blue light bulb is the natural white tone. And now this is too warm. So you can play with your white balance settings to make it to where your, um, your different temp temperature light bulbs are producing almost a gel effect, a filtered color. Again, it just depends on which you know, play, or uh, which white balance settings you play with. So I always encourage you to play with them, play with different kinds of light bulbs. So you can see I move the lights back a little bit here, make a little contrast. Now I'll grab this, this white shopping bag, which is pretty common. You can find anything like this. And it's pretty thin, pretty transparent. And I'm gonna put it over top my, my, uh, my little clamp light on the right. You can see it softens the light. Yes, it takes the power and it goes down a bit. It's not as strong between the two, but look at the shadows, they're not as harsh. So this is a good way to diffuse your light. So here I have a picture of me uh, holding up my flashlight. This is that mag light I play with sometimes. It's a, it's a good way to spotlight just a little bit of uh, harsh light onto one area. See how powerful it is? And it's, it's a warm light, it's not like LEDs. So when you shine it on the face, you can see it produces this little spot of warmth. Now you could, you could use that to your benefit or maybe you don't like it. So it requires a lot of play. So here I am out of frame kind of shining it over the shoulder. You can see I'm hitting the top of the head here and casting a little bit of a glowing light back here. Here I'm on top and a little bit of flare here. And again, it just depends on what you like. You can see I'm stepping into the frame a little, accidentally blocking a little of the light so it got a little darker, see? That's because I stepped into the shot with my elbow. I turned the body because I think this is interesting of, a, um, of an angle. I kind of like this off to the side. kind of looks like a you know, president of a corporation <laughs> off to the side. And I keep playing. And you can see this uh, bag here, you can change it up. It doesn't have to be a white bag. So I try a warmer bag, an older Kroger bag, which has a slightly brown tone to it. And when I put it on there, it has a slightly different white balance. It's a little warmer, it's very mild. Let's keep playing here. Let's try this yellow bag. I put that on and it almost has a green tone to it because remember we're white balance set to this blue light with a little bit of yellow added and it has that slight green hue. And then here's a green bag which adds much more green, it's, but to me it kind of looks much more warmer. And it's a thicker bag, so it's cutting out a lot of the light. So this is much softer lighting. I probably need to change my settings just a little bit to get that just right. And here's a blue light, and I, I changed my lighting here. Uh, I'm sorry, that green bag, but I changed my settings. And then I, I grabbed my reflector and I kind of stepped up, so I'm trying to collect a little bit of that light. And it's not collecting a lot. You can see it just filled in the shadows just a little bit. I think that my changing of the exposure kind of fixed it a little better is I have a diffused light kind of coming through the bag, hitting my reflector, which isn't very strong light, and then bouncing back here. But you'll notice there is one thing I am doing, is I'm starting to mess with this harsh light on the shoulder here. Maybe you only want the highlight to hit the back of their head, that left light here. So let's play with that. Let's play with me casting shadow. So you can see me moving up here, see the shadow here? Moving up, moving up, see the shadow slowly starts to creep into the frame. There it is, right here. There you go. So I got to like right here, look at that shadow. Now, now his shoulder isn't collecting like just his head. So it kind of seems a little more starker. So again, this is kind of me playing with, just playing. I use the word play, but I, I think that's a really good analogy for this, what we're doing here. 
until you get something you like. Now I'm doing something else here. I have a really harsh shadow on him. It's kind of like right here. If you step closer to the light source and away from your subject, it's gonna make that harsh line more fuzzy, more soft. So that's what I'm gonna do here very slowly. You can see this line get a little softer. So see the, now it kind of, it's bright here, it's, dark, it's darkish here, and it kind of has a gamut now. It's not as harsh. I get really close and I, almost, I fuzz it so much that the line is it's starting to fuzz up like right here where it's dark and brightness and it's very, very soft because I'm stepping really close to the light source. I'm gonna include, I'm gonna introduce a third light source and this is uh, just a, a clamp light without its, uh, its rim around it, which you can take them off pretty easily. See the difference when I turn it on? It's another really uh, cool light source, but since I'm white bounced to it, it doesn't look blue, it looks natural. But to my camera that's documenting us, of course it looks blue because it's, I have it on an automatic setting. It's fluctuating as I, as I shoot. So it kind of is all over the place, but our, our final image over here on the right, I have it metered properly. So I kind of put it behind, you can see I put it back here and I put a blue shopping bag around it to make it even more blue. But that blue shopping bag is a little thicker so it cuts the power. But you can see I'm just trying to shine it on the wall and I'm casting a shadow so I'm making a mistake here. So I put a clamp light or I put a, the, the rim around it again just so it holds it, the bag a little stiffer for me. Then I put the bag around it. And again, remember it's, see the light it's casting? It's very soft. It's not a very bright light source because that bag is cutting a lot of the light out shine up right against the, the white foam core and you can see it's, it's adding a slightly blue effect and I'm in the shot here. So I'm playing around till I get something I like. Um, if I step away and put it over the head, see look here, right here, I'm getting really close. And it's getting a little bit of blue tone, which I kind of like that little blue flare. You can see it's starting to look like that studio lighting in a professional studio. Again, I'm just playing, step away. I move this light a little further back. You see I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to play, but look at the difference in the position of the light once I moved it back. Further back, way further back. Look at that stark lighting here. This looks a little more uh, brooding and dark and mysterious. Maybe that's what I'm going for. I step over to this side, turn them right towards the camera. And now I'm gonna make sure both light bulbs, I put a little bag over my hand because the light bulb's hot. This is a little like bag I, I, have, I keep in my studio just for moving odds and ends, but it's great. It's fabric, it's not plastic, it won't melt. Just to protect my hands. So now I have both have uh, cool light sources on both light bulbs, I'm sorry, on both clamp lights. I use the same um, light bulbs. I, I think they're, they're both really, um, they're natural light, but I think they're from two different boxes. One is this one, one is this one. And you can see even here, those companies, same company, but two slightly different when they, you know, factory when they made them, I think they're like a year apart. They, uh, they literally uh, are slightly different hues, which is like so strange that the companies can't be consistent, but it's very close. So I'm trying to get this little stark effect here with these backlit, uh, these, these over the shoulder light sources. And as I kind of, I'm playing here, I turn my little light bulb that's in my, I always just have this in my studio and you can see it flared a little bit of light up here. See there? And I was like, eh, I can't, it's not hitting my subject, it's just hitting the back wall, it's not that interesting, so I turn it back off. So I just keep playing. I turn up my power, I turn down my power. I get my little speed light, cast a little light here, shine it down the brow, get a little of the teeth. A little more forward, I step back. I decide that I don't like the white background, let's make it dark, so I just grab some black fabric, and this is just a black blanket from Ikea, and I kind of stick it up there, and you can see it does a really good job of like eliminating the background. Now, if I had light hitting this black fabric, you'd probably see like dog or cat hairs or wrinkles or whatever, but none of the light is aimed at it. The light is all aimed up towards the subject, so nothing's collecting uh, all those materials that, that would make it pop. There you go, so now I'm combining a little bit of all my tricks. I like this little glowing red light there, very Halloween. And at the very last shot I take, I just added the foam core right in front of it and it does bounce a little bit of soft light and fills in, see the difference? So again, like, I, I don't know which one I like the most, uh, but I, I do know that just playing around, I got a lot of good shots. So let's just see what we got here and clean one up. Now I've already gone through all the pictures and kind of highlighted my favorite three. I kind of ranked them and then I have it uh, ratings by, by star rank. So let's see here, which one is the best? I mean, th and this is all up to interpretation. Um, I'll just clean up a couple of these. Make it square just because I'm thinking of Instagram, I guess. And you can see I have a little dent on the foam core back here that may be slightly distracting to some. Of course, me, the, the, the finicky perfectionist, got rid of it with the clone stamp. 
And I don't think there's that much, there's much I, I need to do to this. I think right out of the camera, it did a good job. It's very stark. The hairstyle reminds me of a 1970s portrait and the sash, I don't know what that reminds me of, um, which is just a camera strap is what I'm using right here. Uh, but I think, you know, there's a million things we can tweak with this one. Uh, let's go back to the other one. Let's grab this one. I think needs a little tweaking. I'm going to crop it square. Like I don't think all, all portraits need to be square, but just for this image, I think it works best square. This one's looking straight at the center of the camera, so I'm going to try to use some symmetry here. Yeah, slightly. There you go. As close as I can. There you go. Nice and stark. I'm going to pull up a little of the light in the hair. I'm going to use levels. Not too bright. Not too bright. Use midpoints instead of highlight. And I have a little flare happening back here. See the little flare? That's the light hitting my lens. So I'm going to, I'm going to be careful and be aware of that. So I like this adjustment, but it's too bright down here in my opinion. So I'm just gonna do the trick of just Command I, and so I'm just gonna paint in with the mask uh, my adjustment very slightly. Let's turn it at a low opacity. I just want it in the hair. That's really all I wanted. And again, this is all personal preference. Maybe a little on the collar there, brighten up that collar. See what I did there. Brought that back a bit. And I think the, the blue tone, it's got a light, slight blue to it. I, I don't like that. I'm going to tone that a little bit. See, there's a, a million ways I can do that. I, I'm just going to use levels and go to the individual colors. I think it's maybe like a greenish blue. Let's see here. Like I said, play. Adding a little magenta. Here's blue. It was blue and cyan. I'm not sure which one it is. I turned it just a hair, a little more red. I'm sorry, um, magenta. Let's see here. Ooh, I like it in the suit. <laughs> but this is a hair too red, so I'm going to just paint it away in the face. Just paint with black. There you go. On the neck, it's a little too red there. Halfway on the, that little flare right there. I think that color works a little better. And there you go. So I, I think just with a little bit of play, you can get um, some interesting results that, um, that you wouldn't know that they're any good until you sit down and just kind of flip through your images. So I say try a million things, uh, turn things up, turn things down, pull the lights closer, further, diffuse them, reflect them, bounce them. You can do this outside with the sun too. You can diffuse the light with a gigantic piece of fabric that'll soften the light or you can bounce light with a white piece of fabric or a white piece of foam core or what have you. So I don't think there's a wrong way of doing it. I think there's just, um, just what gives you the best results. Something else I wanted to share was these uh, lighting guides, which you can find on the internet, and they're very, very helpful um, for seeing how people have done certain tricks and replicating them. And there's actually a community of people that share them. Um, as you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in really close, and the quality isn't amazing, but you get the idea of like what they call it, like Rembrandt, the soft box. <laughs> but you can see that they're, they're applying the light, and they give you the exact location of your camera, the model, the backdrop, what kind it is, black, white, what have you and if it's diffused light or harsh light. And you can see the difference between this diffused light here, you can see it's much softer shadow than on the left. Let's go around and see what else they play with. A, a snooted light, where it's a strobe, it's kind of uh, angled right at the face and look, very little light is hitting that white background. So look, it almost makes it pitch black. You can see a little bit of gray there, but so it's eliminating that, but it produces a ton of shadow. As opposed to over here, they're using a light bouncing off of a little dome, which you could think of it as the same way shining your light source onto a big piece of foam core and bouncing it back. Look at it does, it casts a little bit of light on the back, uh, the white black, uh, background, produces a gray tone and much softer light here. Let's kind of start scrolling down and seeing some of the other playful um, tricks they're trying here. They tried a similar trick that we did. They put two lights over the shoulder, aiming towards the camera. So the background gets a little darker, No, very little light is hitting it, but it's probably bouncing off her shirt. And then we have that kind of dark uh, shadow right down the center that's produced in this over the shoulder technique. As opposed to flipping it around on the left, look at this. It's kind of what we're more familiar with in a lot of portrait photography, where it leaves very little shadows on the face because it's covering every inch here. One light uh, looks like it's above. They're, they're, they may have to write that down in here, but uh, the, the big gigantic light source is right above the head looking down. As you can see, it produces shadows on the neck. Let's go to some of these last ones. Here we go. Well, we'll, we'll see here, they have a little guide or a key down here. 
two lights, one on the right, one on the left. One's a, the one on the left is a little closer, so it's more powerful. And then a little snooted, little tiny light source over the shoulder that's hitting the top of the head. And that's what that little flare of light that's here that isn't here. You see, and it's the same thing as using a flashlight to kind of shine a little extra light. Um, here's, here's gels, the last one here. Used a colorful purple, blue. Blue on the white background makes, of course, it turn blue. And then a big, gigantic red one adds that warm tone. So same thing as like our shopping bags um, to be put over the light sources kind of produce similar effects. So these are really helpful and you can find them online if you just Google uh, lighting guides and people hide, like will make these little maps. You can download the little, um, the little icons and kind of you, you can share your test and your um, examples that you've done uh, to, um, so that other people can kind of emulate what you've done or you want to see how they do it and you understand by reading these little guides, okay? Good luck.